good morning. Mm. Well, tomorrow is the MPP primaries, and uh, Mr. Musa Danko, as usual, has been looking at. Uh, I realize, uh, Mr. Danko, that you look at a limited number of constituencies. First of all, which constituencies are this, and why do you decide to focus on them? Right. Um, first, of, uh, first of all, good morning to you and your listeners. Um, Global Info is a polling company that tends to uh, look at races that are quite interesting or are thought to be interesting. And because we haven't got uh, uh, unlimited resources, we have to choose where we think the race could be interesting in the national interest or also within the context of our local politics. So we chose those areas because of what we feel there, there are of importance to 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 us as, as as a country and politically in terms of the outcome of the 2024 elections. Now, which constituency did you choose? Uh, we looked at Bantama, and uh, you know the uh, Senator Bwachi is there, uh, uh, facing of the Senator uh, Japan's brother. So obviously, we thought they would be showed down there. So that's the reason why we went to Bantama. Mm-hmm. And then Adansia Sukwa, um, we've heard Katie Yamon recently, and um, the threat that people say he could come under. So we went to uh, Adansia Sukwa. We also went to Belkwai because of COP uh, Alex Mensa and his testimonies and why he wants to come to parliament. So those were uh, some of the areas we went to in a century. And then we did Kishayasu um, because of the Deputy Minister for Trade and the uh, uh, contest going there between him and Kankam. Uh, and then also we looked at Yengi uh, for what uh, we believe was a uh, contest that would go on there very fiercely. We also did um, Ngomi Kwabinya. Uh, obviously, you know, Ngomi mm. Kwabinya is one of the hottest seats in Ghana today, the largest constituency in Ghana, and Ajotafu and her problems seems not to have gone away. And we also did uh, Henry Korte, a uh, retired regional minister for who he is, and we are in retired and we thought we should look at that constituency. We also did a uh, turn on off where Frida Prempe is slashing it out with uh, uh, Gideon Bakwa, the office of the vice president. So these are the areas we looked at. And we are also currently looking at a very key constituency in the central region, but we won't mention it until we are done. Mm. Okay. You, is work in progress? Yes, we are work in progress in the western region, but we won't disclose where because of. of Sometimes people may may make phone calls to disturb the course we are making, so we we'll just keep it quiet until we are done. Mm. And when, when will you finish with this particular? Because oh, we should finish this afternoon. We will okay. come this afternoon. We are interviewing about four hundred and fifty delegates, and we have about ten people working on the calls. We should finish soon. Okay. Now let, let me start from Accra, Greater Accra. Uh, you said. One of the places you looked at is Dome Kwabinya. Of course, uh, Dome Kwabinya, what interested you when it comes to Dome Kwabinya? No, it's going to be one of the seats that will be he- uh, heavily contested next and uh, the next election. Um, whether Ajatafu wins a seat or Makokwe wins a seat, we expect a huge battle in Dome Kwabinya between NDC and MPP. And also, we wanted to see whether Ajatafu still has the favor of the, co- the constituency. And for them as head delegates. So that's the reason why I went to Mikolga. It's going to be around the seat that will be watched keenly in 2024. And, and from the results you're getting, uh, the polling you've done, um, has it confirmed that it was, it's going to be a, a close race? Between Makokwe and uh, Safo? Or... Yes, between Makokwe and Ajoa Safo. No, no, it, it won't be a close race, no. It will not be close at all? No, no, no. I just have has fallen out of favor in the constituency, and I think he will go home after after tomorrow. Fallen out of favor? Oh yes. I mean, the the delegation some some of them blame her for Ghana going to the IMF. That's how bad it will get. <laughs> they blame her for Ghana going to IMF. Yes, because he had he was the reason why the E levy was delayed, and then the revenue shortfalls in the country became problematic, and then we have to go to IMF with a cap in our hands. Can you imagine? Oh, really? That if she was there, the E-Levy would have been passed and then we would not have gone to the IMF. Much earlier. I see. Well, that's quite an, that's quite an in- interesting one. So, uh, what are the numbers saying? Give, give us some fine numbers in terms of how well Michael Quay is doing us against. Michael Quay is doing 43%. Okay. Joseph is doing 10%. And Sheila 10%. My fear is that I, I do not could even play third. 
because at the moment the Sheila is uh, as nominee has likely on the delegate numbers. Okay. But if you have forty three percent, ten percent, you have sixty three percent accounted for the rest of the delegates. What are they telling? We have twenty nine percent also undisclosed and undecided from a small percentage. So even if we say that you're going to give everything to us, I mean, it's not going to be enough. She's still not going to win it. No. Wow. Because she's clicking her boot uh, with 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 Sheila. Very, 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 very interesting. Now, you also went into the constituency of uh, the Greater Accra Regional Minister. Um, yes. Is he safe from the well, numbers he was looking at? Uh, he is safe. <laughs> oh, okay. He can go home and sleep. He is safe. Ah, I see. Very interesting. Uh, okay. Then then you went to one of the places that interested me from the very beginning. Um Tano North. Yeah, Frida Pempe is going up. Frida Pempe is now Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources. So now she is in government. And then she's going up against the Vice President's aide. Um, who, who has an edge there from your poll numbers? At the moment, Frida has a tiny edge. And if, if you look at the, 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 the dynamics in the Tano North, it looks mm. like Gidon uh, Bwako is the establishment candidate. Okay. Because his his boss is now the the leader of the MPP, and Frida's boss is the outgoing president and the former leader of MPP. Okay. So we believe that the numbers who may not be disclosing their voting intention may be for may be for Frida Pempe. Because she she leads by thirty one percent, with Mbako twenty nine percent, but the margin of error is about three point one four percent. So it's within the margin of error. So it's going to be very close close contest. But if I'm a gambler or I'm somebody who bet, I may bet on Frida Pempe. I'm you, not asking you to go and bet. Okay, so but, but you ask, you think that even though Gideon Bako is the establishment candidate, Frida Pempe, from your perspective, is most likely to emerge? Could like, yes, because she has a slight edge. Slight edge. But it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me if Gideon wins, because it's a dead heat. And with dead heat race, it really, the poster cannot tell. <laughs> Interesting, but you you seem to have a, because there you're talking about is it twenty nine thirty one? If you're having twenty nine thirty one, it means that we are at sixty percent, so forty percent undisclosed and undecided, undisclosed, undecided. Yeah. Mm. Uh, from your experience, undisclosed, undecided voters, where do they tend to lead? The undecided when when you split the vote, they will vote the same way as the as the current race. So we expect that if that is the trend, uh, Frida will get slightly more of the undecided and then Gideon Bakun will get the remainder. But when it comes to the undisclosed, they know who they are voting for. They're not, they're not telling us. So the question is, who are they afraid to say that we support? In that case, you have to really understand what is going on in the, in, in, in the, in the constituency. Whether they feel that Gideon Bakun has the power or, or uh, I mean, uh, Baumia has the power or Ronaldo has the power. Well, I'm building up to the some of the places that are very interesting. But you, you said in Chiai, so it's about the deputy trade minister and who? And they can come. Okay. Uh, uh, Stephen Amwa and can come. Okay. And so far, uh, has your curiosity been served? Because you, I'm guessing you think that to be a close one. Does it look like it? And at the moment, it's an open race because about 21% or 23% support, um, um, what do you call him? Uh, the incumbent. Okay. And about 4 or 5% support can come, 5% percent support can come. But a huge chunk of them are undecided and, 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 and also uh, not disclosing. That is where can, uh, um, that problem could, could lie. Because if you are the incumbent MP, people should not have a second guess about voting for you. And if you have them sitting on the fence or, or they're not disclosed, it is highly unlikely they may favor you. So he might be in trouble. Okay. The incumbent is a deputy trade minister, right? Yes. Okay. So he is in trouble because if that huge number, those huge numbers of people are te- saying that I haven't decided yet. Yes. And also a lot of them say that they were they are not disclosing, even though they know who they are voting for. See? Very interesting. So uh, for you, would it be surprised if he wins? If he if he, if he retains it? No, he, he has an edge on the headline poll. Mm-hmm. 
23% to 5% thereabouts. He has okay. an edge. The question is whether he has enough uh, support within the undisclosed and undecided to, 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 to put him on top. If he doesn't, then he's going to be in real trouble. Mm. Now, let, let me come to Bekwai, because you said, and of course, Bekwai, uh, the man who's been there for so long, who is the first deputy speaker, um, is no longer uh, contesting. Um, COP, Al- Al- Alex Mensa, is contesting. And you said that is what interested you. Yes. Um, if you look at the COP Mensa, I mean, what his testimony is, at the recent IGB, uh, IGP I, I think he, he was really uh, uh, Mr. and he was really making his point. So for us to hear that he was going to contest in the choir was a bit curious. So we had to go there and, and see whether he, ha- he has the upper hand or not. And if you look at what has been happening in the choir, uh, the wife has been his uh, godfather in the constituency and he's been taking him around Taking support for him, and if you look at the current situation of Joe White, he is doing excellently in the constituency. About seventy four percent said he's done very well, but that doesn't seem to translate into vote for the person he wants to bring, and that is the problem that uh, yeah. he has. At the moment, uh, it is a poku or the poku. The rough guy is, is ahead in the polls, and you have close to forty eight percent of the voters said they were not disclosing, and we don't believe that those not disclosing will prevent COP Mensa. So even with the backing of Joe Weiss, COP Mensa is still struggling? It's struggling, yes, it's struggling. Because the, 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 the affection they have for Joe Weiss is not translating into vote for COP Mensa. See, yes, uh, from the very beginning, the impression we got was that it was uh, a handsome favorite to win that, uh, uh, to replace Joe Weiss in there. But that is not what your poll numbers are telling you. No, the numbers are saying something different. Mm. So your poll numbers says Edusa Poku. It's leading. Okay. And could win the the quiet constituency family. Very interesting. Uh, and then let's go to Adansia Sokwai. If I Katie Amon tried to get his uh, main contender disqualified, uh, it looks like he failed. And uh, so he will contest him. And I understand this is not the first time he's contesting him. Is Katie Amon safe? Um, Katie Amon is leading in the polls, but the lead is not good at all because of the, the same problem uh, uh, others have, undisclosed and undecided voters. They appear to favor the insurgent candidate. And in this case, Katie Amon is not the insurgent, but is the establishment candidate. So if the theory that we have established is anything to go by, then we expect Katie Amon to be fighting for his survival tomorrow. What? Give, give us the numbers for Katie Amon and uh, his closest contender. I think Katie Amon is around uh, 23%. The contender is about 4%. I mean, the gap is there. But the problem is the, those undisclosed and uh, undecided. I mean, again, for an incumbent MP, they shouldn't be second guessing whether they should vote for you or not. And that is the problem. See. I see. And then let me conclude with Bantama. Yeah, uh, and that that place uh, is, is quite. I mean, in fact, Kennedy Japan himself has has gotten himself involved in that race. Um, so Rafael Japon Asenso Boache, Asenso Boache is a darling of the president. Uh, how is he looking for him? I mean, there's no match. There's no contest in Bantama as far as the are concerned. Um, Asenso Boache is going to win. Mm. He's going to win hands down. Really. That was a surprise. We 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 got. We thought there was going to be a uh, huge contest there, but the poll numbers that have come out doesn't show that Asante Boati is in danger. He's going to win the race quite comfortably in Bantama tomorrow. I see. I see. We thought we thought it to be closer. So even you are surprised at what you're saying. Yes, because the numbers were so surprising, overwhelmingly endorsing Asante Boati uh, compared to what we had showdown, showdown. So for us, there was no showdown. I see. Well, um, but I want to ask one last question. Now, in this kind of delegate races, you can wake up in the morning and somebody has brought television sets and is sharing. And then somebody is bringing huge stacks of money and they are sharing. Um, the undecided voters, uh, I don't know to the extent to which you engage them, do you sense that the monetary factor 
the, the the inducement factor may be one of the reasons people are also cautious not to say that I am here or there because yes. if you are undecided, perhaps you can, you can take from both sides. Yes, yes. I think that that is certainly the case. And for the timing is very important. If we had spoken to them after everybody has given them the money, they would have told us their true intention. But maybe at the time we spoke to them, they haven't seen the entire uh, camp yet. So some of them will be waiting to see. But above all, you see, even when they take money from you as delegates, they will want to vote for somebody who they will they believe can win the election for MP. Somebody who can win. Yes, for MP. Okay. okay. That's because great. look, they are delegates. They have party at, uh, at heart. Also, they want to make sure that they make money. But after receiving both from both ends, they will take the right decision. It's not because of your money. Well, all have given. So there's a level playing field after, after receiving the money. And at that point, they will decide who is the best for the for the consequences. I see. Uh, we're hoping that you are done Akin Suedro because we have a, an accountant general, no mean opposition, very big man deciding to go to parliament. <laughs> So, but unfortunately, you, are, you have not gone there. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we haven't got much in stock, so we would have done so many of this, but mm. in the end, so we have to do what we can about it. What you've done is good enough. Thank you. Thank you very My much. Pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Musa yeah. Dankwa is executive director, global info analytics. He provides the data that forms the basis for the discussions we have. Like I said, all these numbers can change drastically.